Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. Jugging, you're increasing your odds a whole lot because you can put up to five hooks on a jug and depending on how many people you have out there, you could have hundreds of hooks working the area. A nice little blue cat. When I first came down, I really thought he had brought me to the end of the world. I just didn't really understand it and I think it's a beauty that grows on you. The island is our primitive campsite. Over there, there are 12 sites that have no water or electricity. Texas Parks and Wildlife, a television series for all outdoors. This series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchase of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $40 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram. Clancy Terry and his friend Richard Burridge are chasing cats. No, catfish, that is. All around Lake Buchanan. Though their day began awfully early. What you hit? It also started slowly. Come on, fish. There has been a bite or two. Oh, there he is. And there has been some good-natured ribbing. He's jerked it like a girl. No. <laughs> but so far, there haven't been many catfish. He's talking to you. It's nice little blue. See how pretty they are? It's the big ones that Clancy is known for catching. I guide for trophy catfish. In order to attract these fish, anchors away. Some 40 feet down. Clancy and Richard serve up a variety of smelly baits. My wife says I can tell when you've been catfishing. <laughs> right, there's one. The fresh shad seems more attractive to another fish today. Oh, it's a striper. Clancy guides for striped bass as well. That's good, Richard. That's about a three to four year striper. If you can get the stripers out of your way, you'd probably catch some catfish. <laughs> Catfish are gonna be next. Get him, Richard. With some persistence, Clancy and Richard find what they've been fishing for. Catfish. Sure enough. <laughs> it ain't big fish, but something. And they'll be back to catch the big one another day. It's just a lot of fun. Especially if it's a big one. While some folks just enjoy catching catfish, others will literally line up to eat them. We got the catfish. I think it's worth the wait. Let's see. There you go. Catfish is a great fish. Mmm, that's good. One weekend each fall, the Conroe Cajun Catfish Festival turns Conroe, just north of Houston, into a capital Zydeco music and all things catfish. It's about everybody coming downtown and enjoying the catfish and all the food vendors and all the great Cajun music uh, and everybody having a good time. That's what I said. Right now, well, you know, catfish is a year round thing. The festival is also a chance for local fishing guys like Carl Boston to meet a few new customers and show off some Lake Conroe catfish. We get asked every year to come in and bring some fish, and the kids love it. You can't keep their hands out of the water where the fish are. Oh! <laughs> Soon after the festival, Carl is back on Lake Conroe. I think it's the best catfish lake in the state. Not with clients, but with friends. That's what I do on my days off. The two boats are out for an evening of jug fishing. 
jugging, you're increasing your odds a whole lot because you can put up to five hooks on a jug and depending on how many people you have out there, you could have hundreds of hooks working the area. Fish it. The GPS is really nice. Great little tool for us to track where we put them and find each jug. Even the jugs themselves have gone high tech. These are what we call flagging jugs. Whenever a fish pulls on the line, he'll slide the counterweight to the bottom, and then we know it has a fish on it or something's hit it. Toss it, Stephen. By the time the boats have anchored all their hooks in the water, that's all of them. Some of the jugs have already flagged. There's one back to our left. Yeah, he's on here. There you go. A nice little blue cat. Catfish are caught, hooks are rebaited, Fishing. and jugs are returned. The circuit continues nonstop, and as night falls, the ice chest fills. <laughs> You want to make a fish haul, jugging's the way of doing it. Jugging is also a good way to find the big cats. I think we have a decent fish coming up here. Pulling in a large catfish can require a little bit of teamwork. We got about a 20 pounder coming up. That's it. It's just fun to come out and see how many of the big ones you can catch. How much does he weigh, George? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we really enjoy it. We got him out. The thrill of catching a trophy fish does not require keeping it. 26-4. Take a picture of them and turn them loose, let them grow. <laughs> Maybe next year you'll weigh five more pounds. So Morris, Wayne, and George have their own policy regarding these big and most productive fish. They keep only a photo. Okay. Uh, ah. <laughs> and they keep a good story, too. Yeah, they want to us when they get in that water. Well, that's a good start for the evening. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Increasing interest in catching catfish in large numbers or sizes has also increased the need for studying catfish. As the interests change, obviously the management has to change. Come on, little fishies, come on, little fishies. Nearby on Lake Livingston, right biologists are learning how to measure populations of catfish okay. species more accurately. It does get fairly fast-paced. I've frequently heard it referred to as a, as a rodeo kind of collection. Up front, front right, right Dave. If you pump electricity into the water, it ends up stunning All fish. Right. Uh, this has been known for a long time. Poachers did it in the past. We can do it legally, whereas others can't. It's a very efficient method. We needed thousands of fish to be collected, uh, tagged, and then released to get the answers we were looking for. $3.99. Got it. The marking was specific to different fin clip combinations, so when we recaptured the fish, we could tell where that fish came from. A few fish were kept for some other samples for aging and those kinds of things. 798. Ultimately, standard sampling protocols will be developed from that. As biologists get a better picture of catfish populations in reservoirs and rivers, they can better keep catfish healthy and anglers happy. Whether you want to take some fish home to eat or whether you want to try and catch a trophy, uh, that's, that's kind of the goal in all of it, is to make sure those opportunities are there for everyone across the state. Here we go. Mine's big. I don't know, mine's bigger. That means Carl and his friends <laughs> should always be able to go fishing for cats. We got a cat fight going on. <laughs> if I can be on this water, I'm going to be on this water, whether it's a job or not. I'm going to be fishing. Oh, boy, you got another nice one. Whether on a hook, a little bit of a workout, on the menu, or on their own, there is just something fun about catfish. I've always been a catfish man. You know, they say we're a breed of our own, and everybody has their favorites on this lake that we make. We're happy about all this. 35? 35. That's a pretty. Okay. I love it. <laughs> Back in there. 
Rollinette and Burden Lawrence are taking their sturdy steed, Miss Ellie, out for a spin through their South Texas ranch. We ride around to see what needs to be done on the ranch, what's working, what's not working. What we ride. They've turned an overgrazed cattle ranch into a wildlife oasis. When I first came down, I really thought he had brought me to the end of the world. I just didn't really understand it, and I think it's a beauty that grows on you. Gosh, it's cool this morning. I was worried for a while because she wasn't going duck hunting with me, but when we got involved down here, she really fell in love with it. When I come on this ranch, I get goosebumps. It's so impressive to see all of the improvements that have occurred here over the last number of years since they owned the property from what it used to look like 25 years ago. The cattle had just about eaten all the grass. No place for quail to hide and for the does to hide the little baby deer, and so the predators would often get the little baby deer and, and the little quail. Enter the Quailerator. Invented here on the ranch, it's specially adapted to create ground cover for quail. The spikes are modified to mimic cow's hooves. They churn the soil without knocking everything flat. Right here in this quailerated area, we have clumps for nesting and cover. And right over here, we have aerated parts that will provide food for quail. We've really increased the number of deer on the ranch and the number of turkey. And it's nice to be able to preserve the wildlife that's been here for maybe millions of years. South Texas will promise you less and deliver you more than any place I know of on Earth. Everything we do here on the ranch is, is all about the wildlife. I will help our grandkids know how important it is to save the land, and it's not easy. You have to fall in love with this. In East Texas, you got trees everywhere. It's quite peaceful to be out in the woods and it's another way to commune and to get back to nature. But you can get out and actually hear what's happening. Trees, trails, water, and wildlife make Martin Creek Lake State Park a refreshing East Texas destination. You can leave your cell phone off and uh, maybe catch up with civilization, you know, another time. With the noise in life, you know, noise around towns and roads, and you get out here and you're, instead of you're ringing in your ears, it starts to calm down, your soul kind of quiets, and you, you start to feel like there's possibility. You think about things. <laughs> ah, well, it's safe, clean, fun. It's, uh, don't really have to worry much. Uh, there's no uh, no worries. Having fun with the family, getting the kids outdoor, fishing, trying to teach them a little bit about nature. The lake's good. A lot of good fishing out there. Yeah, there's another one down here, right here. Catfish, bass, crappie, brim. Uh, but the vast majority of the people are coming out here for bass and catfish. It's good fishing for catfish. A power plant on the lake keeps the water warm, supporting a bountiful fish population year-round. Thanks to the lights on the dock, folks can fish any time of day or night. A lot of people come out to go fishing. Some of them just come out and go boating. It's 5,000 acre lake, so there's a lot of space out there. We have day use uh, at the swimming beach area. A lot of people come out with canoes, two little volleyball courts where people can play volleyball. <laughs> the island is our primitive campsite. 
Over there, there are 12 sites that have no water or electricity. The two bridges will cross the two bridges. There's a trail around the island that a lot of people go on. A lot of people come here for the hike and bike trails. The trail is very clear. You can follow it easily. This time of the year, there's a lot of leaves on the trail. A real pretty. We're right now in the process of fall actually catching up with us. So within a couple of weeks, we'll have a lot of good color out here. We have anything that you would want to observe out here from foxes to squirrels, bobcats, deer, a lot of deer out here. There's a huge draw to returning again to a peaceful place that makes you feel better about yourself. You can get peace here. You can get the calmness. It's kind of got a cozy feel to it here in East Texas. It's, uh, I guess the word I'm looking for just be a home away from home, really. These are the birds of Sundown Island. And this is Chester Smith, a watcher of sorts for the birds that nest here. Seth Spoonbill on his nest now. <laughs> He's still giving that other bird a dirty lip. This man-made island in Matagorda Bay is managed by the National Audubon Society. And it's Chester's job to keep an eye on the 18 species of birds that nest here. I have a lot of birds that are beautiful when they're in their mating colors. So one of my favorite is Reddy Secret. Reddy Secret is on the threatened list. Look at the plumes on that great egret. Isn't that beautiful? Those two there, look at there. And they're the most beautiful bird on the island, I think. It's March, spring is here, and the nesting season is underway. We refer to these birds as colonial water birds because they nest in colonies and they're nesting colonies for protection from predators. I always like birds. I've learned quite a lot. It's fun to come out here, see what's going on. Here's some beautiful great egret chicks. You can tell they're great egrets because they have a yellow beak and have green eyeshadow. For 20 years, Chester has worked for Audubon as an island warden. He's a great ambassador for the birds, and he really puts in the extra time and energy and does whatever it takes to get people to understand how important it is that his birds stay healthy. Today, we have a list of honeydews. <laughs> Most of you people have been coming out here on the work day for many years. It's now fall. The birds are gone. But volunteers are here. He's so motivated, you kind of gain that same passion for, for the cause that, that he's working so hard for. We've got a mile of beaches here to clean the trash off. It's fun coming out here and helping Chester out with his project. This is something he cares about very much. Chester's helpers plant some drought-tolerant shrubs. When I first started coming out to this island, the idea was to plant as many little seedlings as you could and hope that a few live. Fertilizer? Okay, yeah, put a bit more in, just a little bit more. Yeah. So we tried a new strategy of taking our money and buying plants that's pretty well established, has a really nice root system, and uh, we're finding out that they do a lot better out here. It's amazing, you come out here six months from now, you won't believe it, they're huge. The birds actually will rest on top of them. They've really become friends. And they're willing to do all those things that I asked them to do to help the birds. 
so it makes good friendship. Come on, Tester, let's look at this pipe. It's now winter. Andrew Smith from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is out with Chester to see some sand. Tons and tons of sand are being pumped out of the Intracoastal Canal and on to Sundown Island. The higher we get this island, the better it is for the bird's net. There's two sandbars along this area that naturally occur in the bay that tend to build into the intercoastal. What that creates is a shallower channel than what's required for safe navigation. That is stacking up like I like it. But every year we have it set up so that we can get it dredge here and basically move the material over here and use it beneficially on the island. Andrew, I think they're doing a real good job. Right. I like to see the sand piled up high because these birds that nest, they all have a, a better chance of not being destroyed in a high tide. It's going to be great for them. For the brown pelican, sundown is a sanctuary. Listed as an endangered species, a pesticide known as DDT almost wiped them out. That's a pelican nest with only two eggs. When he first came to Audubon at Sundown Island, there were fewer than 10 breeding pairs of brown pelicans on the island. And Chester thought that maybe he could help do something about that. Using donated fence material, Chester built these pelican platforms. And it worked. So well, we watched them, and we were very careful to ask people not get close to them. So, year after year, they grew in number. Now we have approaching some years up to 2,000 nesting pairs on that island, and it's been fantastic. This is a federally endangered species that Chester has, we think, almost single-handedly helped bring back to strength on the Texas coast. There's been a major comeback in the pelican population, and I believe it's got to do a lot with my grandfather and, and his passion that he's had for birds. Had Chester not come to Audubon and come to Sundown Island when he had, I'm not sure that there would still be brown pelicans on that part of the coast to talk about. It makes me feel good. It feels like all the work that me and the volunteers have done is we've been successful. The pelicans, when they're hatched, they're gray. They gradually turn white in a few weeks then they gradually turn brown. Spring is here once again, and as the birds arrive at sundown for another nesting season, Audubon volunteers and Chester are back as well. I really like to be there in the springtime when the first birds come in and keep track of them. His motives are pure and He's not doing it for popularity or anything. He just wants to help the birds. He's like a grandfather to the island. Chester thinks about retirement. But like the birds that return to sundown, he too has a call. My plans were to, to retire when I was 85. I've already passed that date. And now I'm trying to make 90. And his calling continues. I've been encouraged to make a hundred.
This series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchase of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $40 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram.